Welcome back. So today we are looking at MX Linux versus Manjaro. Both of these distributions are community driven distributions that have an awful lot of passionate Linux users behind them. I've made videos individually about MX Linux and Manjaro before and if I remember I will link them up in the cards above. But today is looking into how do these distributions compare to each other? What pros do they have? What cons do they have? And what audience would suit them better? A few disclaimers right up the front. First of all, these, uh, this video is based on my own opinions. Your opinions are going to vary. Those opinions are based on observations that I've made and some facts as well. Now, the other disclaimer I want to make is that I'm running these, what you see here in the video is running them in a virtual machine, but I have experienced and used both of these on actual hardware. It's just a lot easier for me when I'm dealing with a lot of distributions to use them and record them in virtual machines. Also, there is no scoring system for these comparison videos, uh, only comments. And that's because I believe at the end of the day, Linux is about choice and you would only compare two things that would make sense together if it could help you make a choice about which one is best suited for you. So if you're on board for all that, then let's get into it. MX Linux versus Manjaro. So before we get going this week, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor for today's episode, which is NordVPN, one of the leading VPN providers on the internet. Look, chances are if you're running Linux, you're interested in privacy. And if you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. It reroutes your internet traffic through multiple computers so it can completely obscure the location of that original internet request. Now, NordVPN is one of the best in the business. And if you don't currently have a VPN, you run the risk of having your traffic open to the rest of the internet, leaving a digital trail of yourself online, or at the very least, just being geo-blocked for services like Netflix or Hulu. And a VPN service such as NordVPN can help you fix all those problems. NordVPN has won multiple awards for its amazing service. It has over 5,000 servers in over 62 countries. It doesn't log any data whatsoever about your internet traffic, and it has a pretty simple to install Chrome extension, which is lightweight, it's user-friendly, you can just go out and grab it for any browser that you use. In fact, if you wanna go super double sneaky private, it even offers Onion over VPN. So if you wanna jump into a Tor browser session, it will actually route your traffic through a VPN and then through the Onion router so that your traffic is double encrypted, absolutely impossible for anyone to find out where you are or where you browse. So go check out the link in the description for 75% off a three-year plan with NordVPN. Three-year plan is by far the most economically effective way of getting this leading edge VPN provider and it's less than a fancy latte a month. So definitely go and check out the link in the description below, 75% off and you get one month for free. All that said and done, thank you to NordVPN. Let's get back into the show. So I'm gonna start out with what these distributions both have in common. First of all, they both have passionate and vibrant communities. Like I mentioned at the top, both of these distributions are community oriented and community led distributions. This means a lot of the decisions that they make aren't really dictated by the governance or the priorities of a corporate entity. They are influenced by the decisions of hopefully their community and their users. Now, also, on that note, they are some of the most popular community-driven di di distributions, especially in recent years. Um, now, Manjaro is a rolling release. MX Linux is not a rolling release, but it has some characteristics of a rolling release. Both of these distributions use XFCE as their default desktop environment. And for the purposes of this video, I'm looking at MX Linux 19 beta one, as this distribution has a more up-to-date kernel and the same XFCE desktop version that Manjaro currently has, which is XFCE 4.14. Um, both of these distributions are based on an upstream parent distribution. On MX Linux's side, it's based on Debian. In the case of version 19, Debian 10 Buster. On Manjaro's side, it is based on Arch Linux or at least it has its heritage in Arch Linux and, uh, and draws a lot of its package management and other structural uh, characteristics from Arch. Now, both of these distributions aim to be more user-friendly out of the box and more approachable than their parent distributions. It's one of their kind of outstated goals. 
and both have developed a very nice custom tool set over the years, leading them to uh, dominance on the desktop Linux side of things, at least for a lot of enthusiasts. And also, I just want to point out that neither are based on Ubuntu, the other leading desktop Linux operating system. Okay, let's get into MX Linux. I'll talk about cons, then I'll talk about pros, then I'll flip the coin and look at Manjaro, cons and pros. Here we go. MX Linux 19. So bear in mind, this is a beta release, but I believe the characteristics that I'm bringing to the fore here are true across MX Linux releases. So this particular one. Uh, so cons in some people's minds is the fact that it is based on Debian. Debian is a more conservative distribution when it comes to rolling out updates. Therefore, you do have a slower upgrade cycle. The, the kernel that you run and the software that runs on the user level is, uh, is a bit slower. Also, it means that you don't get direct upgrades from past releases. Comparative to Manjaro, Manjaro can keep rolling on and on and on without ever having to reinstall. Now, another con for MX Linux is that some have commented it does have a bare bones installer. The installer is very functional for those who, uh, who know what they're doing, but for those who are new or who are unfamiliar with an installation process, it is a little bit daunting and there's not a whole lot of guidance as to what you should do. It is very simple installer, but bare bones nonetheless. Also, my personal opinion is that it does have a weird desktop configuration out of the box with how it lays out the XFCE desktop. Now, this can be very quickly remedied in the MX Tweaks tool and simply throwing the paddle onto the bottom as I have done here in the video makes it uh, infinitely more understandable, uh, at least out of the box if you're unfamiliar with how um, XFCE works as a desktop environment. So that could be considered a con. Uh, first impressions do actually count for a lot. And I think in the Linux world, we do need to realize that sometimes. Also, it is harder to change the, the kernel that MX Linux runs on. Now, it's not impossible by any stretch at all. It is in fact Debian and it's quite easy to add or remove a kernel from Debian. However, uh, on the Manjaro side of things, they have a very nice tool that allows you to change between which kernel you're running. And I'll get to that as a pro for Manjaro in just a bit. Now, the other thing that is considered a major con of the MX Linux desktop is that it doesn't officially support other desktop environments. On the Manjaro side of things, there are a lot of desktop environments officially supported, and then many that are supported by the community. MX Linux officially supports XFCE, and that's about it. Of course, you can add other desktops there, but your mileage is going to vary. And finally, I would say the biggest con, or one of the bigger cons, against MX Linux in this regard is that overall across the system, there is less visual polish. Okay, nitpicking, maybe. But now we're gonna flip the coin and look at some pros. So if you're ready to rage quit in the comments, hang on there. Here we go. MX Linux is very, very quick to install. And this is definitely a con. It is also very, very responsive. The desktop flies, no matter how much stuff you throw at it, if it's running on relatively modern hardware, it absolutely creams through most tasks. The latest XFCE 4.14 is butter on this system. It also has excellent custom tools. And in my opinion, these tools give it a clear advantage over Manjaro. And there's a very key distinction that I wanna make here. MX Linux has the tools to be able to help you recover, help you build, customize, and get back from a, a, a mistake so much easier than a distribution like Manjaro. This makes a big difference because not only is MX Linux, I believe, more stable than Manjaro, but they actually give you the tools to be able to mop up after yourself very, very easily if you do accidentally break something. Again, both of these distributions being aimed at enthusiasts, we break stuff all the time. And MX Linux has the tools built right into the system to be able to get yourself out of jail very, very easily. Also, there is excellent help documentation locally installed on the system. This is a major pro. And also for many Linux enthusiasts, the option of not using systemd as the system module initiator is in the words of Flossie Carter, a major go. Now, also MX Linux still supports a wider hardware range than Manjaro, arguably out of the box in that MX Linux supports older types of hardware, including 32-bit and others, whereas Manjaro tends to specialize on the 64-bit desktop with also some streams there for ARM releases as well. 
Now, more importantly, MX Linux overall, and I mentioned this in my Why is MX Linux so popular video, MX Linux represents a, a, the ability and the power of choice on the Linux desktop. The highest praise that I can give for a distribution like MX Linux is that it is pragmatic, it is focused, it is functional, it is fast, and it gives the tools that most Linux users want to be able to tweak and customize their system the way that they want, and it is rock solid stable. So concluding thoughts, rock solid, semi-recent kernels and great hardware support. It is more stable than Manjaro. It gives you function over visual polish, pragmatism over flashy visuals. This is true in the desktop choice that they've made and how they present their operating system to their end users. All right, let's flip the coin and let's look at Manjaro. So on the con side of things, this is gonna be very purely anecdotal because for me personally, in the times that I have run Manjaro, I have had instances where apps have crashed on me. I have not had a, I have not had a situation where Manjaro itself, the system, has ever bugged out on me. However, there are plenty of stories floating around Reddit forums and elsewhere where the stability of Manjaro can be compromised. I personally believe that this is quickly evaporating as Manjaro specializes in having a stable distribution that, uh, that it presents to most end users, and then it has a testing branch for those who want to live on the bleeding edge. So in most cases, Manjaro stability could be put down to user error. But the fact remains, recent software does come at a cost, and the cost is often instability. Also, some would mention that there are some interesting decisions at a governance level with Manjaro. Now, I don't believe it's anything to get too up in arms about, but when a lot of the free and open source world lights up around the inclusion or the, or the possible inclusion of free office, which is proprietary software, um, a lot of Linux enthusiasts were not impressed that that was even a decision that was being made. So it is very much not included by default. It is an option that you can choose if you like. Also the inclusion of um, Microsoft Office online wrappers for me personally is a huge boon and convenience, but some do not like the presence of these uh, proprietary services and closed software solutions being presented out of the box in Manjaro. It's also slightly heavier on resource usage. Again, for me, this is purely anecdotal. And um, while I could probably present hard data to back myself up, it comes down to at the end of the day when I'm running the things that I'm running, it just feels like Manjaro taxes a bit more from the system than MX Linux does when they're both running the same desktop environment. What I would say is that to a lot of people, Manjaro represents a jack of all trades. It's, it very much tries to be all things to all Linux users. And arguably they are doing a better job of it than most. However, what they miss is that target-focused pragmatism that MX Linux has. Am I nitpicking? Absolutely, but this is a cons list, so deal with it. By the way, the look and feel could be a little bit dated in my opinion in that the green overtones are pretty aggressive. It's not to everyone's taste, but at the end of the day, it's Linux, you can do what you want with it. I gave the same knock to MX Linux, so I don't know, both step up your game visually, I guess. And also the other thing that I've noticed is that Manjaro can be quite aggressive on power management out of the box. Um, it will limit the use of fans in almost every laptop that I've ever had. Uh, where the processor will be allowed to get quite warm before the fans kick in. Not really sure if that if there's a particular reason for that. Again, it's just based on my opinions and experience. Now, the tools, the custom tool set that Manjaro includes are definitely a pro and they belong in the pros list. However, when we're comparing this distribution against MX Linux, the sheer quality, innovation, and amount of tools that MX Linux provides makes the custom tools that come on Manjaro look a little bit uh, lackluster. And this is, a, again, a key con for Manjaro, in my opinion anyway, when it comes to comparing it against a tool like MX Linux or a distro like MX Linux. There is so much innovation and updates being pushed in every new release of MX Linux. There is so much innovation momentum over on that distribution that it's impressing a lot of Linux enthusiasts. On Manjaro, you get a distribution that tries to be all things to all people, but on the flip side, in maintaining such a massive operation, uh, multiple desktops, multiple community editions, uh, multiple Linux kernels, you name it, in trying to do that, uh, they lose a bit of that innov innovative edge. And some would argue that the, that the momentum 
of, of developing new tools and, uh, and new possibilities with Manjaro is a little bit stagnated at the moment. And there doesn't seem to be a whole lot that changes from major point release to point release. Now at the same time, these tools while they aren't as comprehensive as what is found on MX Linux, they are still much better than average. So I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's jump to the pros list. So first of all, the number one thing that just makes Manjaro such a hard argument to pass up is that you get up to date software with multiple relatively polished desktop environments and bucket loads of community additions that you can run, download, install, and never have to reinstall ever again. And for most people, these desktops will be stable, they will be feature rich, and they will do exactly what they want them to do until they decide to do something else. And this cannot be overstated enough that a lot of Manjaro's success is due to that simple point. Also, the ability to be able to customize the drivers that you have running on your system very conveniently through their own tool is amazing. The multiple um, versions of managing dual graphic setups that they present to you, you can uh, choose different options, is a huge win because most distributions just say, here's the one way you're gonna do it. If it doesn't work for you, bad luck. With Manjaro, you do get some options there with drivers. Another huge pro for Manjaro that only comes with time is it has a wider support base, it has a wider install base, which means the amount of software that supports Manjaro, or at least has been tested on Manjaro, is immense. And with tools like Flatpak, Snap, and not to mention the Arch User Repository, or AUR, which granted isn't officially supported, but still it works, uh, you have access to any and all software that you could possibly want. Manjaro as a distribution is more widely acknowledged in the Linux world, it's more widely used and widely supported. It does have a few hardware partners out there, there are more mirrors available globally so your updates can come through your internet connection faster, there is just more documentation, it's just a more popular distribution. So if you run into issues, chances are somebody else using Manjaro has as well and can help you out. So basically my conclusion is, and again, it comes down to helping people choose what is best for them. And, uh, and hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Drop a like if it has. But what this basically boils down to is that on Manjaro, you get an experience that's um, a lot more mass market, a lot more support. And if you are starting out in the world of Linux and maybe you have tried some Ubuntu variants and you're not really, you're not really enjoying it that much and you're looking for something that is tailor-made to a, a Linux user that wants to go deeper and get more out of Linux, then Manjaro is gonna be an amazing option for you. If you have been running Linux for a little while and you wanna fall in love with Linux again and just the sheer pra power, pragmatism, and just amazing performance of Linux, then go check out MX Linux and chances are you won't be disappointed. Well, I reckon that about wraps it up for this week's episode. I know it's been a long one, but I tried to keep it as concise and compact as possible. As always, let me know your preference in the comments below and why. And once again, special shout out to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Definitely go check out that link for 75% off a three year plan in the description below. Thank you so much for liking, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.